So the marine ecosystem in the Arctic is relatively simple in the sense there aren't very many different trophic levels. So you convert energy as you go from one level to the next through predator-prey relationships. And the thing about the Arctic marine system is that it has adapted over hundreds of thousands of years to take advantage of a very narrow range of habitat characteristics. And when I describe that light and heat and momentum is controlled by the sea ice, that means that if you change the sea ice, you're changing all of that habitat structure. And that's true for viruses and bacteria, it's true for algae, it's true for zooplankton, it's true for the vertebrates right up through to marine mammals. And unfortunately, the relationships are very complicated. So it's difficult to explain to the public, you know, for instance, polar bears. A lot of people think, well, if polar bears are, the, the habitat is disappearing for the polar bear, so therefore the polar bear is going to disappear. But it's a lot more complicated than that because the sea ice is actually not so much disappearing as it's changing from a multi-year ice dominated environment to a first year ice dominated environment. What's really changing is the length of the open water season. And that does put a lot of stress on polar bears. So it's, you can't paint it all with one brush. I could give you other examples at the other end where the algae that grow on the bottom of the sea ice, they take advantage of the micro scale characteristics of what are called brine pockets in the ice. And these brine pockets channel salts in the ice and drain them out underneath. And they have a lot of uh, nutrients associated with them. So the algae take advantage of being around these very small drainage holes, not right in them because they would get pushed off the ice, but around the outside of it. And as you warm the ice up, if you warm it up too quickly, those brine drainage channels get much bigger and they slough off big chunks of the algae into the water column where they're not as efficient at growing as they are if they're up underneath the sea ice. And I can give you examples like that for every one of the different trophic levels because the sea ice is the key characteristic of how that marine ecosystem evolves. Yeah, there's a big issue going on in the Arctic right now because we've changed this uh, role that the sea ice plays in controlling the light, the heat, and the momentum, it's changing how the lower level trophic organisms develop. Some, in some places they can start to develop much earlier because you have a very thin ice cover with no snow cover on it, for instance. So there's enough light to get through there to stimulate the early production of that. But if the copepods, which are the guys that come up to the surface to graze on those algae, aren't ready to come up and graze on those algae, then the algae just continues to exist through its full cycle, then it sloughs off, and when the copepods do come up, there's nothing there to eat. So these are called mass, match, mismatch kind of relationships. And they exist through many of the lower trophic levels, so from the, from the plant side of things into the lower animal side of things, we call them grazers, so they come up and graze on the algae. But it also occurs further on the food chain too. So if these copepods, for instance, don't do well because they didn't have enough energy to consume from the algae, then when things come to eat those copepods, they're also missing that energy transfer. So the timing of the energy transfer up through the various trophic levels is really dictated by the annual cycle of the ice cover. And if you change that annual cycle of the ice cover, some organisms can adapt to that quite quickly and they're very capable of doing that, but the other ones are going, man, I missed my lunch. I missed the whole side of it because it came too early for them.